life. We spend large parts of it in our comfort zone, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's comfortable. It's a nice place to be. But as we all know, the time comes when you want to step outside that comfort zone and take on a challenge. And that time for us came just before our Bosnia trip. And we thought it'd be interesting to see what happens when you plan absolutely nothing. The initial plan was to go by the Channel Tunnel again, same as last year, but we, we opted for the ferry in the end. First things first, let's get some introductions out of the way. That's me, Jamie, sporting some homegrown facial hair. Not bad, eh? And I make up one half of the Lightweight Adventurers duet. Uh, the plan was initially to straight line it pretty much down to Switzerland and then get to the Balkans, just sort of nip into the top of Italy, but Weather has definitely made an impact. So the plan, if we go through Germany today, it's gonna to be a day full of, or an afternoon of riding in the rain, followed by a full day tomorrow of riding through thunderstorms. Although it's only, is it tomorrow, only a 90% chance tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's like a 90% chance, so we might get away with it of heavy thunderstorms. <laughs> and here he is, the other half of this dynamic duo. This is Mark, and what he lacks in facial hair, he more than makes up for in height. So, so we've, made, we've, we've rethought it, um, and although it's going to add a bit more distance on, we decided we're going to basically travel down to the south of France today, which should keep us in the sort of sunshine, get to the bottom of the uh, Swiss Alps, and then just truck east. So that's the plan. Before we knew it, we were across the English Channel and thundering through the beauty of the countryside of northern France. And it wasn't long before we found a little bit of dirt and some windmills. Now as much fun as this all was, we had distance to cover. So the decision was made to jump onto the motorway and cover as much distance as possible on day one. Last night was a bit of a conversation. Um, over exactly how the next leg of this goes because day one turned out to be pretty bloody expensive didn't it we wanted to get south quickly so that we could enjoy um as much as we can around the balkans we sat on toll roads and that meant that food's expensive you're paying more money for fuel uh, and you have to pay the tolls that's influenced how we're going to do this next bit how we're going to do the rest of the trip really so from here on in we are going to try and save the pennies but keep the adventure keep the fun in and try and save spending so much uh, we had a big old conversation where do we go today uh, we end up with three different destinations four different destinations five different destinations i think but we settled on the idea of going over the alps and we're going to end up at lake como that's the plan for tonight so that's what we did and boy were we in for a treat The views seemed to get more and more impressive with every mile and it wasn't until later on in the trip that I'd be proved wrong about my belief that this was the most beautiful place on earth. Just pulled up in Switzerland. The plans changed hour on hour this, this, um, today. We were going to go to Germany and then we thought Italy. Then we started going to Germany, got a little bit lost when we stopped for fuel. We've ended up in Switzerland just outside Liechtenstein. So Jamie's just busy looking for a campsite. We really enjoyed this way of just approaching it. Like, where does the wind take us as long as it's in that general direction? It's a plan that is working really well for us so far. Also, we thought, 
Morning, so it's um, Sunday morning. I mean, there's no doubt about it that Switzerland's beautiful, but how did our first day of saving money go? Um, not quite as cheap as we'd expected because Switzerland itself is... Uh, Very expensive. <laughs> you pay for the beauty, don't you? And we couldn't go for a, a wild camping option that's strictly uh, forbidden in, in sort of this area in, in southern Germany. So we didn't want to uh, risk that. We've got a great plan for some cheap breakfast. We bought some cheese last night from a vending machine. And there's, I've got, I can't wait to show them, a baguette making machine just over by the entrance to the Pretty cool. camp. So it warms the dough up as you there. Looking forward to taking you through all the beautiful scenery and everything else today. Yeah, we can stunning. ride some motorbikes at an Alp and see what happens. Well, I'm gonna put this in my bag. So, right, we'll go and collapse the tents, get on the road, and we'll see you in a mountain, probably, after I've shown you a dough machine. Stand by for that. I love the idea of this. I'm a big fan of warm bread anyway, so let's see what happens. Yeah, so we get. Right. Okay. And once we'd all had a bit of fuel, it's back on the roads and into the Alps, en route to Italy. Well, this is mega. We're well, in the Alps. On an Alp. We're on an Alp in lots of snow and if you can see a massive cloud inversion on the Alps. So it's pretty cold but pretty mega race. It's bright. The sun's warm but it's cold. It's freezing uh, but beautiful. It's absolutely glorious. Now we've ended up, we've, we've been following a few tracks, not tracks, that's wrong roads we were following the Garmin and it kept trying to put on a, put it on a train for some reason so we've kind of ignored Mr Garmin picked a road and it's got very snowy quite quickly which is awesome because awesome yeah um, I just fell off a snow ledge <laughs> but, uh, but what we are hoping is that it's not tried to take us a different route because the road's closed but we'll find that out we'll find it out there's other cars and bikers yeah. going up there so we're going to cross the Alps we're going to go higher and snowier and we'll capture that for you. Absolutely. You know what, these, if you can hear me, these roads are incredible. We've just been grinning all the way along here. It's probably some of the, the nicest riding that I've done. 
I mean, if you've never been to the Alps, then do you know what? Come along, you can ride these roads. They are incredible. Oh, if you look at them, a little blue microphone, you get to do a uh, battle damage repair on that. It lost its little black thing, so this is a bit of seat foam. So it's now a microphone. It's a microphone, yeah. Are you enjoying the roads, Mucka? <laughs> it's incredible. So we did a bit of um, did a bit of snowy mountain pass earlier on, which you've probably already seen. I was expecting a lot more, but actually we've done a lot of valleys and a lot of sort of riding through these trees and conif conifers and stuff. And it's been pretty epic, to be honest. Yeah. I think we went through the Dolomites, but don't quote me on that because I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, man. I some of the best riding I think we've done, full stop. The roads have been busier than I was anticipating, <laughs> yeah. but still some incredible riding. We must have done 150 miles of twisty roads, by, by which I mean there's very few sort of straights for overtaking even. <clears throat> yeah, we've, we've done, not done tracks today. Today's been a road day and we, we consciously did that. That's what we wanted to do. Uh, to be honest, when the roads are this nice and the scenery, you don't need to be off-road, I don't think. Yeah. Um, You've almost crashed three times, haven't you? I have almost crashed. crashed Looking at things, because it is <laughs> that beautiful. <laughs> you nearly rode into a post and into a car because you were looking at beauty. <laughs> and we've uh, we've taken about seven wrong turnings because we've not been looking at the navigation. <laughs> just been just been looking at mountains. We then spent the next several hours riding some of the best roads we'd ever ridden, weaving our way through the Alps and descending down into our stop for the night in Italy. What's happening, man? Well, I um, don't know, really. So it's uh, about quarter past nine at night. Uh, we've tried several sort of campsites because we've headed south from the, uh, from the Alps and they're all closed. So we're hungry and gonna get some food and then figure out what happens from there. Yeah, campsites close at around about half seven in Italy. So we don't know where we're gonna kip but we're hungry. And if it's a 10 o'clock sorting something out, then say la vie. That's French. So, because we're in Italy, pizza. And I think this is gonna be the one here if they let two smelly, hairy bikers in, in full bike gear. <laughs> Feels weird walking in in bike gear where everybody <laughs> else is dressed up nice for holiday. <laughs> yeah, because it's a holiday area. But uh, right, let's see what we can sort out here. They've been very kind enough to put two chairs for all of our helmets and everything. There's a birthday party behind us. We've just crashed. Everyone's nicely dressed up and celebrating something. The food looks incredible. We've managed to point at things on a menu and order two pizzas by the looks of it. That's cool. How's your pizza, buddy? With food in our bellies, all we had left to do was find somewhere to sleep for the night. Okay, so we found somewhere. Um, it's actually, it's the edge of a camper van park thing. So we're uh, 
This is where we're going to be for the night. Can't find anywhere else. I'll do. We think it's legal, but I don't know. We're going to camp here anyway. This is what's happening. And there's a man looking at us out of his camper van, so I don't know because we're not cool camper vanners. <laughs> there's, two, there's two people looking at us through camper vans. So, um, no camping apparently, we've just been told off uh, that it's not allowed. It's a camper van only campsite and that's why we're getting looked at funny. So, onward to somewhere else. What's going on man? Well we got told off by an angry German lady in um, the camper van place. So we were just about to find a wild pitch and we've come across this well, looks like an ideal campsite, so I'm here five minutes down the road. So we've got the penthouse suite, we've got to go and camp. Craziness. It's amazing. We, um, we chatted to Ben King, I don't know if in, you might have followed some of his stuff, but uh, his philosophy is smile at the universe and the universe smiles back. And so you know what, we've, made, we've had a smile on our face because we've done some great riding today, but it's kind of coming through, isn't it? The idea of just life will work itself out. So an hour ago we were sat having a beer and a pizza and now we're in what looks like an idyllic campsite after getting a slight telling off. So we made camp and got some rest ready to attack the Balkans the next morning. Oh, you had to get that out, didn't you? There's someone looking directly at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a look at it. So today is the end of travelling really, the end of getting down to the Balkans. We are on the coastal uh, area of Italy and we're about to jump into what we hope is the real part of the adventure. So Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, all of these places. Um, we need an executive meeting now over a coffee or something to decide exactly what the next move is and it might be a random point in Bosnia, I think. Yeah, we quite fancy getting to a like a Bosnian village thing, meeting some authentic people rather than the holiday feel of, I mean we're on the Italian coast at the moment which is beautiful, but it feels holiday-ish. Well it does because there's holiday people, yeah. even though it's not been a holiday for us, it's just been travel, but yeah, it's not adventure yet it's travel it's it? been a holiday resort yeah, yeah we've traveled for three days so now we adventure we hope to Slovenia. Right, so we're stopping for two reasons. One, for me to put a neck buff on because it's colder in Croatia than it is in, uh, in Italy. But two, because we've changed plans again, as, just as we did last year. And uh, we've gone, come up with a new, a new option. We're going to go all the way down to, to Albania. That was going to be the plan. Uh, things have changed. Albania was just a bit too far. So we're, what we're going to do is um, head down. There, there's a particular bit in Croatia that we want to go to. It's about uh, halfway down Croatia-ish, called the Eye of the World. It's like a natural spring. Desperate to go swim in that. So I think we're going to call that our southerly point and then just spend the rest of our time trucking through Bosnia, Serbia, maybe a bit of Romania, and then all of the rest of that Balkans area around there. It just cuts off going to Kosovo and Albania. Probably cuts about close to a thousand miles off our trip. Get to this place, that's four days traveling to enjoy 12 days of trails back. So that's what we're gonna do. Well, it was
was beautiful sunshine and now we're going through the Croatian hills it's just opened up the weather's just opened up so uh, Jamie's finding his waterproof but it mistakenly put them at the bottom of a pan you just hadn't packed correctly this morning so yeah he's had to dig those out you wanted me to say something yeah. I've ignored 26 years of military training so I thought I knew better and stuffed my waterproof at the very bottom of my dry bag honestly I only checked every other place because I had no idea where to put them because I thought this morning it's hot, sunny, I don't need waterproofs There's times when you can see the value in leaving your comfort zone and then there's other times when it's just pure uncomfortable and today it was wet and cold and it forced us to re-evaluate our plans yet again. Where are we, man? We're about 100 miles, 90 miles north of where we wanted to be, is where we are. Um, and wet, really, really wet. But fast, fast. Every time we come up with a new plan, something happens which makes us going to change the plan again. And we weren't expecting rain, but you saw that that happened in the uh, in the mountains and. Then it just got worse and worse, we pulled over, checked the weather forecast of where we wanted to go and it's rained out for the next couple of days so we had to readjust and now we're in, god knows what it is, restaurant, B&B place, surrounded by a wet kit. It's actually really frustrating because every time we change the plan, the plan is forced to change it again so you never really know what you're working towards or working to achieve. So we were heading down to southern Croatia to do a thing and then Albania and then all the rest of it. Then we decided that's probably too far given what we want to achieve. So we just come further north or stay further north, just stay stationary and the weather's washed us out for the next two days. And so it's getting really frustrating. I was just outside the B&B, really quite disappointed and, and angry really. And I said to Jim, I just feel like the trip's constantly getting away from us. Like we've come all this way and what are we actually gonna do? But the honest truth is we're three or four days into a trip where we've got two weeks. So we need to sort of recheck, but I think that's just the frustration of changing the plan all the time. You know, so having a bit of a plan is good. Changing the plan is good. It's finding that, that balance. So I suppose ultimately frustrations happen, but we have got a plan for the immediate future. Uh, there's some magic potions downstairs because that's th this sort of world has a lot of that sort of stuff, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Uh, magic potions, uh, and apparently this magic potions can give you good ideas, induce a lot of chat, confidence, um, and so we're going to go in... We have a couple of pints of their magic ideas. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, and give yeah. us some, and just really shake our heads, reset a little bit and go, right, what, what are we actually going to do down here? Because riding muddy mountain mud, doesn't sound great in, in its torrential rain. It's not even light yeah. rain. Muddy mountain tracks are great if you go, go for a day out with your mates. It's difficult to try and film and take people on a journey to do that, which we want to bring you lot along. So if it's torrential rain, we're not going to do much filming. You're going to hear about us going on some trails and getting stuck probably in the occasional photo. So we're going to have a little think about that. Reassess, we are still in the Balkans and today's produced some great riding. We had to, genuinely, before it started raining, where I had some pretty big grins, although still a bit frustrated with the change of the plans, but actually cheered us right up. So a little bit of a giving our heads a shake and realise that we are still you know, a long way from home. Uh, and there's loads of great stuff to come, I think. So. And one really cool little thing, the room was 40 euros for the night for two, two blokes, but you can only pay cash. <laughs> and we had 39 pounds 15 when we counted it all out in single coins. <laughs> Um, the guy let us off, so... <laughs> We've been thrown upstairs, which is a strange place to be thrown out of a bar. Um, but yeah, so the bar was downstairs and we've got a takeout and a few beers. 
Um, luckily, it's only 5%, so we thought we'd have lots. You're just there. Huh? You're just there. still raining on the Bosnian border. I've got a bit of a thick head after many, many beers last night. But we're excited for today. Yeah, should be good. Yeah. We're gonna head towards Sarajevo, which is uh, a big city obviously in Bosnia. Featured a lot on the news, sort of 92 to 95, the Bosnian War, which we sort of grew up knowing about, obviously. So. Gonna go and see some bits about that. Yeah, I'm quite excited. Heard a lot of the names of places, so yeah, it'd be, uh, be interesting to go and find out about that. So, gonna take um, an adventurous route there, but probably not off road simply because it is so wet, it has been pouring down overnight. So, we're gonna probably small road it there, I think, and then night up in Sarajevo and then see what the weather's like for off road tomorrow to, for a few days towards Belgrade. So we're going to have our second power coffee because they make a good coffee here. I like turbo juice. <laughs> so we're going to have another one of those uh, and then put our probably still a little bit wet clothes on to go and get them a little bit more wetterer. Uh, and then we'll find out uh, what the rest of the day's got in store. Pinlock. What's all this about? Just have it. I've got this tiny little clear vision bit there and some around the edges. In this weather, riding around Bosnian mountains with next to no vision, even though it's got a pin lock on. So it was an absolute drama, I can tell you that. So we've just found this little shelter, removed the pin lock for now. That was dangerous. Anyway, that, that's what we've just ridden through. And so we went up into the cloud and it got really claggy. Um, and then Mark was basically a double blockage of vision, so we had to come at here just to stop off and try and sort it out. Right, at least now I can clear my visor by just lifting it to get rid of some of that mist. Far from ideal, but it's, it's okay. Today's going to be wet, we accepted that, and that's what we're doing. We're going to embrace wet, but vision needs to be a thing. Vision's okay. I think it was Albert Einstein that said, a ship is always safe at the shore, but that's not what it was built for. And I think he nailed it. It would have been easy for us to write the day off, stay inside, keep warm and dry. But instead, we decided to set sail and see what Northern Bosnia had on offer. The truth is, when the scenery is this beautiful, it's easy to forget you're a bit cold and a bit wet. So here in Sarajevo, uh, just had a night here last night and we were chatting to some, some locals. It's a really interesting city to walk around. Um, as you might be able to see next to me, these are all bullet holes uh, and remnants from the war. It's quite a poignant thing for, for Mark and I. Yeah, we grew up watching the news about the war going on in, in Bosnia uh, and it was probably part and parcel of what led us into the idea of coming into the military, I suppose. So coming here is kind of a a tale of two halves, you know, it's quite emotive for us in a sense uh, because we're kind of connected to this place in some way, you know, through our, through our career. But as you walk around the city, a lot of the lower level stuff has kind of been modernised and it's quite nice, you know, it's um, obviously, as you would expect, wanted to forget what's going on in a, in a way. But if you look up, most of the buildings have still got, still got bullet holes in them. And uh, so it's quite an interesting 
interesting place to come if you've got sort of any memories of, of the Bosnian War. I've got to admit, Sarajevo is not entirely what I had in my mind's eye built up. Well, Bosnia hasn't. I don't really know what I expected, but it's a lot plusher than I was anticipating. The greens are beautiful green, big rolling hills. It's a beautifully picturesque country. And then we get to Sarajevo and I expected it to be a little bit more war torn because we saw it on the news and the no fly zone and the bombings of the mortars, which there's still remnants about actually we saw them last night. But actually I think the bit that really struck me is a naivety on my side because I didn't understand there was such a Turkish slash um, Muslim Islamic influence here. It's been really great to immerse ourselves in that because I had no idea it was there, but I should have. I just didn't have put two and two together really. So we sat had a Turkish coffee, listening to a bit of, um, cultural music I guess it's been yeah, really incredible not what I expected so far and so beautiful I've in fact texted my wife saying I think she would really love it here so yeah very very cool so as you walk around there's the roses of Sarajevo as they've called um, where the mortars came down on the ground obviously devastating effect but they've memorialized uh, well a number of them if not all of them and we visited a few last night you can still see where the mortar exploded on the ground and uh, yes it's terrifying to think what it might have actually been to be in that area um, really quite emotive in that one sense um, to think this stuff just raining in from the sky there to hurt main and kill you know it's terrifying to think that that was ground zero well, the other thing that happened last night is we chatted to some locals and that was really cool we got some good information and um it's kind of guided what we're going to do today and that's we're going to go and head to the Bosnian pyramids which we'd never heard of um, and they were kind of discovered when they were looking for mass grave sites and things like that and apparently the size of them rivals those of, in Egypt and they're kind of not documented an awful lot I don't think so that's a really interesting thing and it's only about half an hour from here so that's the plan for today we've done Sarajevo and had a nice walk around we bought a few souvenirs including some Bosnian coffee. So now it's time to just get the wheels turning again and come move on to have a look at some pyramids before heading off to the northeast. So, yeah. Now, if you're ever in Sarajevo and you want somewhere to keep your bike, Hotel Corner, perfect place. They've got a nice area for the bikes and you get some of the best receptionists we've found on the trip. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. thank you. There's some keys for the room, okay. thank you for last night. Uh, what was that? A sticker, for you. Wow. There you go. I'll put it on a car. I mean, it's crazy car and bike, but it's okay, right? They yeah. both ride, so it's good. Thank you so much. No You're problem. so kind. You're so lovely. So we jumped back on the bikes and left Sarajevo. A place which had some of the nicest people we've ever met. So nice, in fact, they even try to talk to you when you're driving down the road. really cool. Well, the locals telling us about the hill and all the area around him. It's obviously fallen on tough times but, but what a cool guy nonetheless. Yeah I don't know it definitely looks pyramid shaped and it's got straight lines it's a straight line hill. My military training tells me that you don't get straight lines in nature. It's a seven S's I don't know them all but shape, shadow, shine, slow movement, silhouette, straight lines I want to say some others but but anyway you don't get straight lines in nature that's got straight lines who knows like the man said mystery yeah like what I says I don't know um, I think it well could be there's there's pyramids all over the world so yeah it absolutely could be we got told last night that there was an energy around here can't say as I've felt an energy but Maybe there is the closer you get, but uh, yeah, it's interesting nonetheless.
from England. That was pretty cool. Neither of us can speak the other one's language, but that seems to me to mean a thing. <laughs> Strawberries from the roadside man. Utterly delicious. I'm just breezing over my phone and uh, a breaking news of a mass shooting. Uh, a boy, 14 year old boy, arrested in a Serbian school in the center of Belgrade, which is our next destination. So, uh, totally uh, isolated, unrelated. I'm not sure we were ever going to go to Belgrade anyway, but coincidental. Hmm. Which is contrary to everything else we've learned. But everybody we've met here in Bosnia has been absolutely lovely. Everybody. And I know you're going to get these sort of things everywhere. So you just saw these guys on the side of the road as we were riding past, and uh, it was like they've had a puncture or something. Turn around to come and check sure, make sure they're okay. They've come all the way from Poland. And when we said, where are you go anyway? Don't know. So that's a pretty cool thing. So we'll get out of their way, I think. Another hour and another change of plans. I said to you guys earlier that we just read on the BBC about a shooting in Serbia. And that's where we were headed. We were headed to Belgrade area. And I don't think that the security of Al uh, Serbia is a massive concern to us. But the BBC's, BBC's reporting that it's put the country into three days of national mourning. And that's a concern to us because, you know, the internet would suggest they take days of national mourning, rightly so, very seriously. We're looking for accommodation, places to eat, etc. I think it just makes life incredibly difficult. So, another, yet another re-evaluation of plans. And we're going to head further south in Bosnia. It's a beautiful place to Mostar. Then we can take in Kosovo um, and Albania and all the rest of it. But what, what this is really showing us is just how frequent our plans are changing all the time. The, the previous trips that we've done, we've rigidly or semi-rigidly at least stayed to our plan this plan is changing literally every half day we've changed part of the plan and it's just it's crazy it's kind of fun is you know we just happen to lose control of it and and that's the adventure but washing clothes the essentials ran out uh, a couple of days ago, really, so we've been recycling without washing. Which sounds mean because it is. I was just saying there's something weirdly enjoyable about it, just sort of get out. But life would be made a lot easier if the plug worked. I'm not sure they're clean. We've definitely rummaged some fragrant water around some socks and pants. What'd you make of most style, man? Uh, most most of it's pretty cool. It's a cool place. Um, yeah, I kind of like the authenticness more of Sarajevo. Most are a bit more modernised, I would say, but very pretty, very sort of um, what would you say? Kind of. Uh, it's historical, but touristy. Historical, touristy, medieval kind of feel to it, but a beautiful river running through the middle, and there's plenty of picturesque restaurants. I'd say it's probably a good place that you, that everyone should come and visit and have a little look. It's quite a nice place in that respect. So plan for today then. What is the plan for today? We've got, we've changed it so many times. We're going to truck south. We've got about 300 odd kilometers to move today. So we are uh, going to head south through Montenegro and into Albania and have a wild camp on a beach, which is legal in Albania. Wild camping is legal. Yeah. Uh, and there's a place uh, that looks like, we might research on the internet a little bit, looks like we could just get a bit of wild beach camping in, which will be cool. It's fair to say that we're both a bit fed up with just hitting the road each morning, getting in late at night, cheers dit. So Albania, I think, is going to be a bit of a payoff. We've not hit the trails as much as we wanted to, but that's not, that's not kind of been a bit of a blessing as well. It's not been terrible. There's some amazing roads. If you've got a big, if you're a BBW, we all know what that means. Um, there's some amazing roads to just go and enjoy. 
you know, even if you've got a Harley or something like that, a cruiser, come to Bosnia because there's some incredible sights, uh, which we had, we were blessed with yesterday. So um, we've enjoyed that. That's been ace. Find us some dirt, please, Mr. Garmin Zumo XT. So Jamie's going to continue packing his bag. I'm just, there's a river down here that I want to show you. We stayed at Park Villa Park Hotels or B and B. It's a hostel, really. It was 35 pounds a night, and it was amazing. Um, Bosnia, if you're wondering, is really affordable. Really affordable. A pint of beer is about two pounds thirty. And I'm not sure if the GoPro picks up on it, but the colour of the water is insane. It's like a greeny blue that I've not seen before. So very, very beautiful. So as we closed in on the Montenegrin border, we had some amazing roads, some cracking weather, and as you can tell by the music, spirits were pretty high. But all that was about to change. Situation, ma'am. Um, disappointment. And a bit nervous, I suppose, if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest. So we've just tried to do the border crossing into Montenegro, and they didn't like the look of our documentation. Uh, passport's all fine, but we didn't bring the paper copies of our V5. We just took photos, which has been fine up until now. So we crossed the border initially from to leave Bosnia and Herzegovina and there's a little bit of no man's land and when we got to the crossing for Montenegro uh, basically the guy wasn't happy with what we had so he said we weren't allowed in so we turned around so okay not got much of a choice because we needed to get across Montenegro to get to Albania turned around back through no man's land and then the guy on the Bosnian side didn't want to let us into Bosnia either so we had a bit of a moment so i'm just coming down from that because i don't really know how we'd have got out of it if the guy hadn't have just said look it's a problem but off you go uh so ultimately we've got in through one border crossing where someone said yeah they're happy just waved us through in fact they didn't even check the vehicle the registration documents so we've been fat dumb and happy riding around bosnia but now it looks like it's come to an end for trying to get to Albania because we've got no way through now. So, can't go to, we canned off the uh, Serbia, Romania because of the morning. We can't get to Albania because of, we can't get through Montenegro. So we're a bit lost in what's really paradise. <laughs> Just a weird place to be. Yeah, I guess we're just a bit confused by it all, as much as disappointed as well. Because we've got here, we read on the internet that digital copies of V5s would be ample. Um, yeah, and they've done check. I went first through one of them, and he seemed moderately happy with my V5, but not entirely. And then Jamie tried, and now we got turned away. So just really confusing, because like you said, we didn't even get checked coming into Bosnia. Well, that's just a lesson learned, you know, bring the paper copy with you with the insurance and all the rest of it. Maybe a bit of naivety on our half, but we got us this far. So we're gonna have to reassess. We just don't really know what to, to do. I, and you look at this, 
and we're in absolute glorious Bosnia and it's beautiful. But when you've got plans to go somewhere and it's just thou shalt not pass, it's gutting. So yeah, we sat just the borders are half a kilometer up there or so, South Bosnia, beauty. Not sure what to do. Time to plan. Hey, if you're trying to if you're trying to draw out silver linings and look on the positives, which adventuring you kind of have to, I think. Um, it could have been worse. We could have got through the border on what they were kind of considered a dodgy bit of documentation, and then not got through on the way back, and then been stuck in Albania or not got into Albania and been stuck in Montenegro. So yeah. In that sense, um, lucky, maybe. Still doesn't stop the fact that we kind of don't know what to do now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that would have been a really bad place to be, wouldn't it? It would have been difficult. Lesson learned, huh? Lesson learned, yeah. Take all the originals. Take all, I mean, I don't know what would happen if you lost your original en route, you'd be in this predicament. So take your originals and look after him really yeah so. yeah we i mean we were told no no we were told we searched on the internet of course we did due diligence we searched on the internet and said digital copies should be fine scans it's exactly what we took so if you lost your original and you fell back on your scans maybe probably not by our experience yeah. but Hey man, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully we'll get back out of Bosnia because the guy nearly didn't want to let us back in. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the thing is now, we've, the only one we need to worry about is crossing into Croatia or something like that. Um, so we need to be mindful that if there's stuff we want to see in Bosnia, we'll probably see that before we cross the border again. Yeah. Because expecting several border crossings now is not an option, I don't think. Because Croatia is easier to get into, EU obviously, so that'll happen. But Bosnia, maybe not. Maybe our next crossing out of Bosnia is our last for, for this trip. For this trip, maybe. <laughs> All right, we're going to do some planning and we'll let you know what we've decided. Well, if we're quite honest, we've, we've had to have a bit of a chat with ourselves and get a grip, quite frankly, because we're stuck in one of the countries where we have ridden through time and time again, thinking this is utterly stunning. And we've said that over the intercoms all throughout. This is stunning. It's a bit like paradise and we've ridden it in the horrible rain, let alone in the beautiful sunshine. So it's only gonna get better. So we've got a grip of ourselves. Ultimately, we've had a decision made for us. We're not heading any for ourselves. So. We've got a bit of a plan and we're going to explore Bosnia to its fullest extent because it's stunning um, and there's some incredible things to see. So there's some waterfalls, the Krivica waterfalls that we want to go and see, go and have a swim under some incredible waterfalls. And then we're going to jump on the Tet, go and see what the Tet's all about in Bosnia um, before jumping off the Tet but staying on trails where we'll allow Mr Garmin to uh, take us on some trails up to Banja Luka, Hot Springs, and then I think we'll jump into Slovenia. Because what actually this has done, weirdly, is taken Albania away from us, which is what we were desperate to see, but it's given us time back, time to explore a beautiful, incredible country, and probably adventure more thoroughly as a result of of losing the adventure. And Mark says we've constantly said it's one of the most beautiful four places we've ridden with some of the nicest roads and we're not even able to go off road and trails an awful lot yet the odd bit here and there so you know every cloud and if you're stuck in a place with stunning scenery amazing roads waterfalls hot springs and the friendliest people that we've ever met yeah like every single person the amount of people have walked up just to just to say hello we're in the Petrol station this morning, a, a guy purposely went out his way just to say hello to us and walk past the bike. So, you so know. We'll, we'll get a grip of ourselves. It's not what we planned, but none of this trip has been what we planned. None of it, not a single ounce. And in so we've had disappointment like right now, 
but I'm sure it'll give us it back, it'll pay back. We know it will. It's amazing what a good friendship and a recalibration of your mental attitude can do. We set off in high spirits to continue our exploration of Bosnia, a place that had already given us so much. And as it turned out, it had plenty more surprises in store for us yet. I was doing fine I minded my own business Till the day you took me home You came into my life Like a sweet embrace Swept me off my feet And made me whole again You came in my life I want to see your face It's been a bit of a strange day all told, hasn't it? It's been... Um... I don't know, a little bit up and down and completely different to how it was meant to be this morning. Yeah, that border crossing, or lack of, sort of threw all the plans into disarray. But we, we said afterwards, once we calmed down, hearts have stopped racing. Mm. Actually, that's sort of defined the trip, hasn't it? Yeah, um, there's been a few times now where we've tried to get out of Bosnia. And um, in one way or another, it's drawn us back in. And that's not a bad thing because we're absolutely loving our time here. Yeah, we were trying to go to the east, going to go through Serbia. We had the issue there. Well, not we had the issue, but we made the choice not to go through there because of uh, what's, been ha what's happened locally in the news. And then actually tried to get out to the south and uh, had one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever, ever had a border crossing. Border crossing, people shouting, no, you cannot come in. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we reflected on it. We drove back and we said, Bos Bosnia is a paradise and it's just gripping onto us at every time. It just won't really want us to leave or it won't let us leave. No, it, so we're going to embrace it. That's yeah, the plan. And, and we're going to explore Bosnia, which is utterly beautiful and some of the, uh, hands down, the, the best road riding I think I've ever done. Oh, without question. You know, and we've not tested the off-road stuff yet, but we've just been pretty much road and wow. Yeah. Now the plan changes a little bit again, but we're going to head north through Bosnia, do the Bosnian Tet, get off-road, enjoy this sort of a thing. I mean... You might not be able to pick up on it perfectly, but it's stunningly beautiful. We've got our local beer, which was around about 60 pence a can, <laughs> and it's good. We've, t we've been drinking it all, all trip long. Here's to a cracking turning point, yeah. we think, in our trip. Cheers. It's really good, isn't it? It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Or I ain't gonna live like this no more Most my life's been waging war Till I found peace, I could have swore What she did shook me to the core And I ain't gonna live like that no Being British, uh, we love a good pub garden, uh, and sometimes you can even get camping in pub gardens back home. But we're in Bosnia, unfortunately, so we're just going to have to put up with this, I suppose. We had tried to get into the B and B just up here, but it was full. So uh, unfortunately, the gent said we have to camp in his garden just down here. It's cost us upwards of seven euros, which, well, we'll foot the bill ultimately. We do have natural swimming baths. It's a lake. I don't think I'll be swimming in the lake. 
Got to try and get the, the Wi-Fi for our seven euros each. Can't. Feel, Shocking. Feel diddled. <laughs> How's the riding been today, buddy? It's first uh, first go off road, wasn't it? The, not first go yep. off road, first big chunk off road. First big chunk off road. The Bosnian mountains, of one of which you can see over there, was beautiful. It was big, bouldery, grey rocks, um, and then just turned into beautiful grey, um, yeah, grey gravel tracks uh, through the forests uh, and over the tops of mountains. It was yeah, it was incredible. My arms are killing. Proper arm pump from all of the the big rocks. It was punishing at the top, wasn't it? It was hard work, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, but amazing. Yeah, what about you? Um, yeah, loved every minute of it. Gravel's not my favoured stuff, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, so there's some that are quite chunky and fairly technical, uh, but all of it beautiful. Neither of us fell off, so uh, that's a good start. <laughs> but um, the, we've said it time and time again, and I feel like a bit of a broken record, that everything out here seems to be stunning. At this place, we've absolutely just, we've happened upon it. We didn't even intend to stop at this point in the day. So the plan was to stop and have a sandwich. So we just grabbed a few bits from the supermarket and then came down here because it looked nice and a nice place to eat. And then we realized that we'd gone further north than we expected that we had, uh, or further north than we thought we'd traveled. So we'd kind of done our northerly chunk that we wanted to get done. And it was three in the afternoon, so being British, we thought we'd just get some beers and sit in the sun. And as much as Mark says he's not going to swim in a lake, he's going to swim in a lake later. Although I did mention it to the the, uh, the last that was serving us. And I said, are we all right to swim in the lake? And she said, yes. Yeah. She says, I think it's still a bit cold at the moment. I was like, I think you might be right, <laughs> because I can see snow on a mountain just there. Ain't touched my bed, just sleep on the floor. But I'm a kid on the floor. We planned very little on this trip, and that came at a bit of an expense at the start. Um, but what's ultimately happened is that at every turn, it's delivered, something's changed, something's happened that's kind of worked out for us. And this place is, is such a lovely place to be. Um, and everyone's so nice, you know, like the price of this is cheap. Uh, you'd pay a fortune for this back home, but the people can't, doesn't seem to be able to do enough for you. You know, the, the people here just seem lovely and that's been the same story all the way through the trip. Yeah, we've got a few days left in Bosnia. I don't want it to come to an end. It's just, it's just great, a great place to be. We've kindly been allowed to add our sticker to the all the list of the travellers that have been here. This is the Mediterranean or Mediterranean B&B. It's on the tent in Bosnia. It's honestly, it's wonderful. Cheap beer, cheap food, and we can camp outside. But it's got that incredible lake, so yeah. yeah. Absolutely, if you're in this area, stop here. It's highly recommended. Plus you can see our sticker. Get on my chores, get some things from the hidden store. This old ship's coming back to shore, cause I ain't gonna live like this no more. Just been riding along the road here, just stopped for something to drink. Um, they went across some sort of dodgy bit of road, which felt it was just unpaved, really. But then Mark says, I think I've got a flat tyre, and yeah, it looks like he has, which is surprises. We thought these tyres were going to be like turbo solid, but. Well, they are, maybe it's got something in it. anything obvious. The uh, wheels off, Mark's having to go with the tyre levers, we've all big ones because these are the Midas. 
tyres and they're known for being difficult. I'm going across the road to get a little bit of washing up liquid, which will hopefully make life a bit easier to get stuff back on. Um, just that allows the, the rubber to slip over the rim a little bit easier. If you stuff everywhere, I don't really know where anything is. And the right area. Tip so extra. Got some washing up liquid and a Twix as a reward. And now it's like getting on. So we have checked the tyre. We've run our fingers round it. I've had my head in it. We have looked for foreign objects. And it is clear, as far as we can tell it's clear, but there's a certain hole in the inner tube. Which is a worrying point, or it's more of an annoyance, because if there's a clear object, quick, whip that out, you know you're done, cheers. But now, probably sure, maybe sure, there's nothing left in the tyre to puncture our second inner tube. So it's more of a botherance not to have anything. I'm just going to have to take a bit of a leap of faith, but our replacement inner tube in, go for it. tyre is inflated, um, we'll just wait and see if it holds, hopefully it does. Scorching hot, but we couldn't have done this in a better place, right next to a garage. Helpful man to help get engine degreaser. Man, fingers crossed it holds, it absolutely should, it's rock solid at the minute, it's got 40 odd PSI in there just to hold it you know. The mitres they're an absolute swine to get on and off but they're a bit of a run flat in some sense you know. We rode for quite a while, a mile, a while enough before we got here and changed it. In this endless creation of love and delegation we are living in the everlasting now All the stars they are waiting For us to elevate And to hang out with them in the sky And the love that we are So you'll recognise this river. Um, well, have we filmed this river yet? Uh, only when we were dipping our bodies okay. next to it earlier. So you'll recognise this river, but from the hot springs. Oh, uh, yeah, the hot springs. Should probably show you that. Uh, cue hot springs music, I suppose. The Banya Luca hot springs, but it's really nice and warm, and um, yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's what four past seven in the morning, lovely warm natural spring, and it flows into the river, which we camped on last night. Yeah, I've never been in a hot spring before, uh, so this is an absolute first for me. Rather cool, isn't it? Oh, no, yeah. it's, hot. it's hot, that's the deal. Yeah. It's awesome, it's a uh, bath temperature. Not scorching, definitely not scorching. Well, warm enough to be in quarter past seven in our shorts. Yeah, and it's uh, it's free. It's a really cool thing. Is there's a footpath that runs just next to up here where the bikes are. The river's there. And it's just holy hell. Yeah, we pulled up, come down, got changed here. So yeah, if you ever fancy it, if you're in. Um, in the area, so we're just near Banja Luka, or Banja Luka if it's spelled. But um, yeah, come and check it out. We're seeing some warm water next to some cold water. 
like a tagline from a brochure. Yeah, you can use that. Just come and sit in water near some water. And feel free to use that Bosnia if you ever want to turn this into a money-making scheme. <laughs> sit in some warm water next to some other water and a pan. <laughs> Get that on your tourism project. <laughs> but definitely, go and check it out if you come to Bosnia. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, awesome. And it's what, 8 a.m., 8 o'clock in the morning. Time to get a coffee and some breakfast. Well, that was a unique blend of weird and disturbing, and definitely the wrong music choice. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, back to the campsite for a coffee. And we're sitting with some amazing people, so we'll swing the camera around. And we are sat with our new friends, Annex and Ilona. Uh, and Noah and Sarah? Yes. Yeah. So we met these guys last night. Um, and when the restaurant closed on us and we had no way of getting food and we thought we was taking a ride out, the uh, our new friends generously offered us a bit of food, which was incredible. And then we had some music, which you'll have heard by now. So, an international artist, Alex. <laughs> Hi, guys. And the angel. Have you guys found Bosnia so far? Uh, enjoyed it? So far, yeah, we really enjoyed it. We love the nature. It's, mm. it's well, look around. It's, it's beautiful. It's friendly we, people. Friendly people, yeah. We love the mountains, and uh, but we have we have a, a hate love relation with the roads. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it's all about, huh? It is, and, and every turn we've found new people to talk to, and everybody's just friendly and wants the best for everybody else, and that's that's kind of been the story. Certainly the story last year on, on our trip and it's just the same again this year. And everybody's doing the same thing, they're just doing their own thing in a different part of the world and yeah, people just are nice and want nice things for other people and these guys are no exception and it's fantastic. We feel very blessed to have met all the people we've met so far and on our last morning in Bosnia probably, um, what nicer way could we have asked next to a river having a coffee, again offered by these guys. So we loaded up the bikes and set off to leave Bosnia again. There had been a lot of things going on on the trip, so we decided to disconnect our intercoms and listen to a bit of music. But it wasn't long before I had to break the intercom silence. Okay, well here we are again. Another garage, another flat tyre. Um, this time mine. How unlucky is this? Two punctures in two days, but both of them luckily happened at convenient times. Tire doctor sealant times two. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, the busiest garage I've ever seen. Ever. <laughs> and two tire doctors. So whilst Jamie's gone for a wee, I've decided to get trusty little screwdriver out here and have a bit of a dig in the tire and I found a shard of glass. Um, Jamie is riding around. We've put the tyre doctor in. Uh, it's like a sealer, but it seems that it takes a long while to seal. So we're just getting it up and down the road to centrifuge and spread, and then we're gonna leave it to dry. We, uh, we bought the other inner tube that punctured for me along back along with us. We've just gone to inflate and it's littered with holes. Um, two, three holes, so beyond repairable, that's gone in the bin. The added drama we have is it's a Sunday and uh, not many places open in Bosnia on a Sunday. So we're in a little bit of a pickle, nothing insurmountable, unsurmountable, whatever the term is. Yeah, tools everywhere, puncture, puncture number two, how unlucky. We'll sort it. We made a dash for it while it seemed like the tyre was holding some air. 
And before long, we were across the border and heading to Slovenia. <laughs> Morning, it's raining again. Uh, so we've just been absolutely howling because <laughs> the, the rain's actually baited off at the moment, but about five or ten minutes ago it was properly hammering it down and the bikes are soaked we're laying in our tent trying to put the bike gear on twisted into all different positions and That's we're just <laughs> separate tents <laughs> separate tents and uh, i said to mark i said shouted th shouted through the tents over the rain i said you'd probably struggle to sell this to anybody is a good <laughs> thing to do wouldn't you if they saw what was going on now <laughs> In the middle of Slovenia, not really sure what to do. Thundering rain and a flat tire. <laughs> a bike that you can't really ride. <laughs> but luckily Mark left his super shirt on his bike last night, so that's nice and wet too. Soaked. <laughs> uh. yeah, do you know what? It, it is one of those things that it, we try, try and look at everything with a positive light. Last night we were in a funk. We got here last night reasonably late because we just had to steady it across, you know, and uh, motorways and that always if we have to hit motorways it puts us in a bit motorways a with a flat tire because we have to get to somewhere where we can fix this thing you know but there's a good thing there is some good news uh firstly we've still got a good week almost a week left on the road and we're in slovenia cool okay that's good so that's a start it's a decent place to be secondly i put a post out on the tech facebook page last night and we i think i've had four or five six responses to that already so i'm going to sift through those so if, it's, if you're one of those that uh, respond i know fern i know you you put a response on there for a friend of yours out here potentially but thank you to everyone that's put a, a response on there we're going to go hunting for motorbike right. tire fixing shops i think that's what they call them here yeah tire fixing shops and there's one nearby it's three miles away it opens at eight hence up early ready to rock uh, ready to work rock in our wet gear so yeah, so you know what, when you see these videos and it's all nice and sunny and everyone shows the lovely side of, of life, it's a bit crap sometimes. Um, it just is. And even with your best mate when you're having a bit of a laugh, it's hard work when it's wet and cold. And you know you've not got to do another wash. Because I'm not fast running out of sort of clean underpants. With no way to dry them in the thundering rain. <laughs> okay. So if you're thinking about getting into it, look, absolutely do it. <laughs> Here's the cell. Here we are, one of our excellent followers, Sebastian. Hello, Sebastian. Over in Ljubljana, where exactly we are, obviously. Uh, suggested we try this place to come and get an inner tube fit. And, pop, 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 pop. inner tube. So the cool man here is putting a bike on an actual stand and fixing a puncture. I'm all kinds of happy. So the only worry we'll have to have after this is getting Mark a bit of petrol, and that's not a problem. <laughs> that's the easiest problem. So, Ace, thank you, Sebastian, and thank you to these guys here. Awesome. You've been free as a vogel in the lucht. Dance me. Puncture fixed. It was time to get back on the road and treat ourselves to a little bit of Slovenian tet. Voel je vrij als een 
Ausfall in der Lucht, wo was ein Meer auf der Kurven von der See. Je bent frei als ein Vogel in der Lucht, dans mee op de golven van de zee. Voel je vrij als een vogel in de lucht, of als een meeuw op de golven van de zee. Je bent vrij als een vogel in de lucht, dans mee op de golven van de zee. These are the gorges in Slovenia and ah, it's just beautiful. The colour of the water you can see behind us uh, is just stunning. This place is utterly stunning. The water is crystal clear. I can see every ounce of detail in the water. And it's obviously coming off that mountain all the way up there, coming down. Honestly, it's stunning. It makes me want to get in and I hate cold water, but I think even I would have a look at this. What's the plan, man? Let's ride it some mountains. We're in the in the Alps still. We're hoping to be out of the Alps. It's what time are we on? Seven, half, half eight. Past eight. Half past eight. Half past eight, and we found a very loosely termed campsite. There's nobody here apart from one man, and he stood staring at me with a can of beer. Um, I can't find anyone else. So we tried it. We really didn't want to be in the Alps tonight. So we decided. I think we've decided we're going to just push on. There's a massive band of rain again over the whole of Germany and sort of run down the middle all the way to the Alps. It's about to hit us. Uh, we don't want to spend the next two days in the rain, so we're going to try again. We're going to push across to France, I think, and um, try and get to the other side of the weather. It does mean a long truck in now. This place has not given us a good feeling. And looking around at the weather, it feels damp here already. It's We're, we're up at 3,000 foot or whatever we are and it's only going to get wetter. So we pack up in the morning, wet, ride for the day wet. Spent too much doing that. Or we can tog up now, push through, maybe wild camp at midnight, one o'clock in France, where it's, it's tolerated anyway, there's countless places. And then spend two and a bit days going up in the dry. I think that's the plan. Bit of a miserable day, so, well, night, or a long night, but quite excited by the flow. I don't know why. This looks like rural France, and that is because it is. And rest assured, we are still only 24 hours or so since the last bit of footage that you saw in Slovenia. Uh, we had to catapult ourselves left a bit, west a bit, because of rain. 
So when we got up and we checked the weather forecast, there was a massive band of rain coming through Europe. And we had a choice. We rode for the days over the Alps. It took longer than we expected, but it was quite pleasant. But when we started to um, think about finding a campsite, when the weather was coming in, it was looking torrential. So we had choices. We either camped up somewhere and, well, you saw the abandoned campsite, which we chose not to take. Um, well, we got a b, b which was 200 quid in the Alps. Or we ride for some hours and find ourselves in France. That's where we are. But the funny thing is, we found a campsite. It wasn't open. We camped in it anyway. FOC. So thank you, un unnamed camping site. It was lovely. Bit of a wild camping campsite. Anyway, truck up through France today. Beautiful sunshine. Bon. Yeah, there's no, no way of getting around it. Like, last night was miserable and, you know, it's not, it's easy to show all the good bits. It's actually really difficult to show the bad bits um, because you just don't want to film anything. We didn't film anything, it was just sat in rain. It was horrible. It was cold and wet. My boots are still dripping now. Uh, so it was a coldish night. The sun's shining now, which is good. It's drying them out, but um, it takes a little bit of time to get going, you know? Uh, so we've had a coffee. Um, Mark's doing his mate thing and trying to cheer me up and I'm trying my hardest to ignore it. But, uh, but you know, that's what you do on a trip. You kind of, you G each other up when the other one's down. Usually it's Mark that's cold. Today it's me that's struggling to get warmed up. So, um, yeah, it was dry out. Life will probably change for the better, but we're already having a bit of a laugh, even though, you know, it was a bit cold and miserable last night. Yeah, and it'll be lovely because it's France. For your friends and vogel in the lucht, of all them me up the golf and van de zee. You bent vrij als een vogel in de lucht, dans mee op de golf en van de zee. So what happens if you step out the door without any planning whatsoever? An adventure littered with decisions and interesting discoveries. At least that's what we found. I suppose the hardest part really is getting out the door in the first place. But if you do, it'll be worth it.